it's Amanda from the Queen of Lean and today I wanted to give you the secrets behind how you can lose weight without actually adding more training. Now this is something that I feel so passionate about because a lot of women, if we're going onto the internet or by this misleading advice, we're always told to train more and to eat less. But we really need to look at how we can build you from the foundations to increase your energy, increase your motivation and then this will in turn increase your results. So when we're doing consults with clients, I always think that the number one thing that we need to target and we need to look after is the sleep and stress. And I'm gonna go into why this is so important and why it could be a factor of really holding back your results. So with stress, you might have heard of a fight or flight response. So basically, this is a response that is inbuilt in your body because we are, we're geared to survival. So back in the day, if we were under attack, maybe we had a tiger trace, chasing after us, it would have been that our blood sugar is elevated, our blood goes out to the peripheries, and this is all a response so that you can either run and get out of there or you can fight to save your life. Um, you have increased mental alertness and there's also increased cortisol. Now, this survival mechanism is so important, but the problem is we are triggering this type of response for just everyday stuff. If we're staying in a state of stress for say a stressful email or a stressful situation or something that's going on in your life, you're elevating your blood sugar without actually burning it off or doing anything. It might be something that's just happening while you're sitting at your desk. So this is something, this is a response that is really going to um, make it difficult for you to lose body fat. And then it is also something that's going to um, set off more cravings. So I'm going to give you some really simple ways that you can work through this. Um, so as I said, in this response, your cortisol is elevated. Now cortisol isn't all bad. This is our awake hormone that helps us to feel good, um, to have good alertness. You should, in a normal circadian rhythm, so your rhythm throughout the day, you should start off with good cortisol morning energy and then it should rise throughout the day, peak in the afternoon and then drop off at night just so that you can get a really good night's sleep. Now a lot of the time, um, especially women because we've got a lot on our plates and we're wanting to achieve and uh, do all this stuff in our life, that we can stay in that state constantly um, and that's where the problems will arise. So I'll go into how a adrenal fatigue works and how you can work out whether this is showing up in your body and then I'll also give you some practical things that you can implement. So I talked about that normal circadian rhythm which is healthy and you have great energy, drops off and sleep well at night. But what can happen is you can push your body through different stages of adrenal fatigue. Now there's three main different stages. Stage one is actually when you feel really good. So at stage one, you're cranking out a lot of stress hormone, a lot of cortisol, you feel really alert. It might be that you know, you're, you're training for um, a marathon or you're doing a lot of weight training or you could have like a really important project that you're working on. And so women actually love this feeling. You're just cranking out that cortisol, getting stuff done and you feel great. The problem is if you're not lowering your cortisol levels, you can then push into a stage two adrenal fatigue. Now that stage two, what it looks like is you start to have this dysregulation in your energy. And a lot of the times when I talk to women, they can identify with this where it might be starting to show up that you have low morning energy, or it could be that you have a slump in the afternoon or a spike at night. So it could be all of these, it could be one of these, but that's sort of an indicator that maybe you are um, being too much in that cortisol or that sympathetic dominant state and that stress state. Um, 
So that's stage two adrenal fatigue. Stage three, if we keep pushing through this stage two, stage three, you, you pretty much start to flatline with your cortisol. So you just have low energy throughout the day. Um, your body gets sick of, it's not as effective as make, at making cortisol because you've really pushed those systems. So it can be that you just feel really tired in the morning. You've got no motivation. You feel quite depressed. Could be that you feel like you need to sleep in the afternoon or sleep all day long and this is a really important point because a lot of the time women will just feel bad that they don't have this motivation that they don't um, want to go into the gym and smash out a weight session and then add to that we're told through the media to train more and eat less and sometimes like when you're in this state the thought of going to the gym just it almost makes you feel sick. So what we need to really do is to look after this from the ground up. So a technique that I really love using with my clients is a box breathing technique. So this is the fastest way to tell your body that you're safe. You're not running away from a tiger. It's doing deep belly breaths. So it's the box breathing technique is um, four by four by four by four. So basically what that means is to breathe in for four seconds, hold for four seconds at the top, breathe out for four seconds and then pause for four seconds. So you can do this absolutely anywhere. It's available to you if you're at work or you could do it before you go to sleep at night. Um, this is great if you can lie down flat on your back, but the main thing that you wanna ensure that you're doing is that you're doing deep belly breaths. So a lot of the time when we are stressed, it's shallow and it's in our chest. If you put your hand on your belly and just make sure that when you're breathing in that you are expanding through your stomach, you're telling your body that you're safe and you're lowering those cortisol levels. The other thing is just to look at your day objectively and see if there's something within your day that you can control. Um, are you taking on stresses that are outside of your control? Like when I first work, worked in the industry, if I had a lot of appointments and people were canceling on me, that's something that's outside of my control or that were moving sessions. And if I got stressed at that point, like there's, there's no point because there's nothing I can do. So looking at your day and seeing whether there's particular circumstances that you just either can change or that you don't take that on as a stressor. The other thing is going to be really looking at your sleep because the two play hand in hand. Um, lack of sleep will also increase cravings and it will also increase your blood sugar. So a lot of the time, if your blood sugar is staying elevated and not burnt off, that's going to store body fat. And as I said before, this is something that will overrule what you do with your nutrition and with your exercise. So it's really important to have a look at what's going on for you. The other thing is, as well just keep in mind that if you are in a stressed state and it is your new normal you can think that this is normal and not playing out for you so just to have that awareness so the other thing sleep hygiene will be important so you could impl implement the box breathing technique um, before you go to bed, ideally around an hour, even to two hours before, looking at how you can dim the lights and get off laptops and screens. All of that light stimulation is telling your body that to produce more cortisol, that it's daytime. So what we want to try and do is at night, you really want your hormone melatonin to kick in and cortisol and melatonin have an inverse relationship. So when your cortisol is high, melatonin's low, what we really want at night is to be able to flip that. So um, dimming the lights, if you do have an iPhone, you can change it so that it's on night mode. That's something that's um, a good tip. Or if you absolutely have to work on your computer at night, um, using an app called Flux, that will change the screen light so it's not that white light that's stimulating the cortisol. This will help to um, if you're having trouble getting to sleep, and this will also help with the depth of your sleep as well, the quality of your sleep. Um, magnesium at night is great. We use um, a magnesium spray 
from a company called Salt Lab, but this is something that goes on your skin transdermally, and it's actually that you, it may sound crazy, but you absorb more through your skin than you do your digestive system. So this can be something that's really effective. Quality is also important, like if you are gonna take a supplement or to do a spray or something like that, that there is the quality there. Um, so that's going to really help with your sleep. That helps to manage your cortisol levels. You can also look at um, things such as licorice root. So if you know that you are in that stage two where you've got the dysregulation of cortisol, you could do something like licorice root to bring your energy up. So if you know you have low morning energy, you could take um, licorice as a supplement or do it as a tea, or it might be that you have that energy slump in the afternoon. Basically, you wanna look at what's going on for you and how you can get back to that nice um, circadian rhythm. So this is all mainly aimed at obviously increasing your energy, feeling good. The other thing that this is going to play into is really balancing through your hormones. So when, um, with cortisol, because it is all about survival and survival is the most important thing, what happens is your, um, Preglenolone and DHEA, which is the foundations of your hormones, this is stolen to create cortisol rather than all of your um, like estrogens and progesterone. If you think about it, it's gonna be more important for survival rather than making a baby. So this is a lot of, um, this is a really common way that women can have hormones that are all over the place and really getting into that stress dominant state. Um, so with this information I guess you know there's a lot of information within this clip it's to look at what's going on for you and maybe just setting the goal that um, you know you do maybe one or two things a week that you tweak lifestyle habits are all about um, making slow incremental change so that they're long-term habits and we find that, that works really well for our clients what we do is a coaching system where we catch up with our clients every two weeks we recheck results we use an in-body scan which um, you find out your starting percentage lean muscle in kilos and then we come back to that every two weeks but we're really having that coaching conversation around what's going on within your lifestyle managing all of this stuff because as I said it's not about training more and eating less that's really really bad advice it's about building you from the foundations up so I hope you found this video really really helpful if you would like more information and you would like to book in a free consult, make sure you register your details below and we'll get in contact with you, chat about what's going on within your life and how we can help. But um, as I said, I hope you found this super helpful. I'm Amanda from the Queen of Lean and we will see you very soon. Thanks.